Hello, I'm Don Johansson, founding director of the Institute of Human Origins at Arizona State University. And I'm proud to be part of this lecture series, celebrating 50 years since my discovery of probably the best known skeleton of the 20th century, the Lucy skeleton. Lucy was a landmark discovery because she was older than three million years. And at the time of her discovery, very few fossils of that age were known on the human family tree. So this opened up a vast new vista for us in which to assess and understand how we became human. And during this year of reflection, I often thought back to what is that single thought that has motivated me for the last more than 50 years to search for the origins of our species. And that leads me back to when I was a young teenage boy and read a book called Man's Place in Nature. It was written by one of Darwin's closest friends, Thomas Henry Huxley, and the seminal idea that caught my attention and still really is prevalent in terms of my research agenda is how did we become human, but more importantly, how do we fit into the natural world? There's a tendency to think uh, that our species is so unique that it's no longer part of the natural world. And I think that's a very dangerous way to look at our origins and who we are today and how we might even contemplate the future. Each time we find a fossil, people ask me, is that the missing link? Well, it's a link. It was one that was missing, but it's a link to the natural world. It reminds us of our origins, of our common origins. It reminds us that just like all other life on this planet, we as humans have evolved from the distant past over millions of years under what Charles Darwin called natural selection. And I think that's important to realize and understand, first of all, because it means that we are united as a species by our past. We all have a common ancestry. We all share the same DNA. There are variations, of course, but the same DNA is shared by all humans today. We're the only species we know of that is human on this planet, this solar system, and at least at this point in the universe. And that means that we are united by our beginnings. And I think that that's something we need to remember more during these days than ever before that we are a common species, we are probably destined to a common future, and that future for the first time in the history of life on this planet really is in our hands. And I feel that we do need, as a species, to reinvent a reverence for the natural world. We are taking and taking and destroying and overusing the natural world in ways that are so destructive and it's time for us, I think it's a pivotal place in human history, where we need to take charge and to make decisions, correct decisions, thoughtful decisions, decisions that will assure the longevity, not only of our own species, Homo sapiens, but of all species on the planet Earth. Because as we all know, and that bumper sticker says, extinction is forever. And if we go extinct, there'll never be humans again on this planet. As we look around today, we see that many species are going extinct. In fact, we don't even know how many species there are on the planet or how many species are going extinct each day. And as we look back in time, as paleontologists do, there are a myriad number of species that went extinct. Just think of the dinosaurs, for example. They ruled for a very, very, very long time. Yet a comet or an asteroid, whatever it was that hit the planet, brought about their extinction about 65 million years ago. There are so many animals that have gone extinct. Paleontologists estimate that more than 95% of all life that existed on the planet has gone extinct. And that should be a warning to us that if we see so many species disappearing today, could that happen to us? And if that happened to us, I think it would be one of the greatest tragedies ever on this planet, because we are a species that is highly contributory, they're highly creative. Think about living on a planet or being on a planet 
or a planet where no longer can you hear Beethoven's Ninth Symphony or go see Renoir paintings in Paris. It would be a tremendous tragedy and we as a species need to be reflective and think about the damage we're doing to the natural world and do everything we can to turn that around so that we will leave descendants who will respect their ancestors. As I look at the broader sweep of human origins, which extends back now almost to seven million years, and I'm sitting in a room here surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of casts of early human ancestors, most, nearly all of which, went extinct, I'm reminded that extinction is a very important part of the theory of evolution. And we will never see Neanderthals again. We will never see Lucy species again. We will never see Peking or Java man, which we call Homo erectus, again. They survived, but they didn't survive to present day. We are alone. We are a sole species on this planet. We have inherited, whether we like it or not, that incredible responsibility, frightening responsibility, to be protectors rather than destroyers of this planet. The future of the planet, the future of our species, the future of our descendants, the future of all of our fellow travelers now rests very firmly within our hands. The central goal of the Institute of Human Origins is not just to find fossils, but to understand the world in which those fossils lived, how they interacted with each other, how they interacted with the environment around them, and to try to help us understand how we became human. Everyone is interested in origins, origins of the solar system, origins of the universe, and the origins of humans. Why not? We're interested in ourselves. And what the Institute is trying to do in so many different ways, archeology, span paleontology, cultural anthropology, to understand what the forces were that brought us to the point where we are today. And it is my hope that this understanding will help us unite the ancient past with the global future. We need to understand where and how we came from. How did we come from the past? How did we become human? Who are we today? How do we interact with the world today in a way that will help us assure a long distant future for life on this planet, especially our own. So I feel that outreach is extremely important to disseminate the, the details of our research to the, the greater outside world where people uh, think about these things every day. You know, mommy, where did I come from? How did I get to be? Uh, how did humans get to be? Why do we act the way we do? All of these things are vitally important. So we have a major outreach program here at the Institute of Human Origins at Arizona State University. And I wanna welcome all of you who are watching this to become involved with IHO in one way or another. Visit our website regularly, uh, listen to our lectures, come and visit the Institute, see a, a completely fleshed out version of Lucy. Look into the eyes of your ancestor that lived 3.2 million years ago and begin to think about what happened over those 3.2 million years. It will enrich your life. It will help you understand who you are, your connectedness to the natural world, and most importantly, your connectedness to all other humans on the planet.